Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm so glad that you could join us. And today we are celebrating Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And my guests today are a mother-daughter duo and they write together. They've written a book called Mended and it's about restoring the hearts of mothers and daughters. And it's Blythe Daniel and Helen McIntosh. And Blythe and Dr. Helen, good to have you on Bridges today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So happy Mother's Day to both of you, yeah, first of all. You too. <laughs> Thank you. So Blythe, let's talk a little bit about this day can be a wonderful day for moms and for other people. It can be really painful. Let's start with uh, what are some great ways to show honor to your mom and to create those memories? Yes, you know, we um, we love celebrating in our family, and we make homemade gifts for each other and homemade cards. And I think those are the ones that you probably have appreciated the most oh, over the really? years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so um, there there are beautiful ways to express love. You know, and uh, my kids, one of the traditions that we have is that they make breakfast for me, and they they try to make it like it's some surprise. And I know they're downstairs doing it, <laughs> and then when they come up with all the things. But you know, what speaks to me really, Monica, is the things that they put put on that plate because they know the things that I love and I want them to feel that I'm as invested in them as they are in me, that mm -hmm. they know me. And there's nothing like being known, is there, no. um, by your mom. There is a special bond between mothers and daughters. We literally, we carry life in us for those nine months yes. and sometimes longer. Um, and so there is a bond that is created in utero and you know, sometimes the bond um, can, can really be broken when that child grows up in a home that's far from loving and affirming and children don't know how to show love because they don't receive love right. from a mother. And, and those are the stories that really um, are hard for us to see. Um, and, and so some of, the, some of those moms might be watching and, and thinking, I wish that I could have had that. Um, and so, you know, it, it is tricky because there's a lot of different people who want to be moms that aren't, mm -hmm. and there are moms that that maybe feel like um, they should have not been born into the family or maybe even had the children that they have. It's mm -hmm. complicated. It really is. I, I shared with you all that I know of a church in this area that's just elected not to, to do Mother's Day at all. They don't acknowledge it because it's so painful for people. Mm -hmm. And I think that that just speaks volumes about where we are as a culture. What do you think about that, Dr. Oh, Helen? Oh, it's, it's a fair question. Mm -hmm. I, I have shared with Blythe that for years and years during my mom's most difficult time, mm -hmm. I would go to the nearby pharmacy mm -hmm. and go to the card section and start my annual look at the Mother's Day cards and come away brokenhearted that I couldn't, I couldn't, there was not one card that I could honestly give to her, and it it was crushing. I I, knew, I was well aware mm -hmm. that I didn't have a great relationship with my mom. Yeah. But what we hope that uh, the readers of Mended can do is to read and get ideas. Um, we have put in these uh, relationship starters or mm -hmm. sentence starters um, to help people get past that and. Um, I believe now I could write inside a blank card and say, Mom, you know, um, thank you for birthing me, and I do want a good relationship with you. Um, what do you, <coughs> excuse me, what do you think um, we need to do to make things better? Love, love Helen. I mean, I, I would have the words now to move things off of a difficult place or to express where we are. We don't want to ignore that it's bad. Um, there's a real popular book, um, Elephant in the Living Room, that <laughs> is discussed. I can see from your laughter, you're quite familiar with it. And so it's not healthy to ignore the fact that we have a terrible relationship. No, it's not. But what you're offering almost as a gift mm -hmm. is to say, Mom, I really want restoration. and. It's such a respectful, humble question to say, what do you think we need to do to make things better? Yeah. Instead of, well, mom, I think we need to do this and this and this right. and this. Um, it's, it's strategic. Mm -hmm. And so many families have been healed as, as a result. Right. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what, what really do we want? Do I really want healing or do I want to just rehash all of the things that have gone yeah. wrong? And, you know, 
I think so many people, Dr. Helen, have been in your place. You want to go and buy a Mother's Day card or a gift, but yet you open it up, and I mean, they're the most flowery things ever. You're my best friend. You celebrate all my successes. You've been there for me when I failed, and that's just not honest yeah. in, in some mother-daughter relationships, and, and I think that's tragic. Yeah. But yet God doesn't, He doesn't call us as His children to live in denial. It is an elephant in the room and we just ignore it and like everybody sees it there, but everybody's just kind of nodding and smiling. But I love what you two have done as, as mother and daughter to say, not about living in denial or about remaining a victim forever, but instead to say, you know, this is my goal. I'd like a great relationship with you. What do you think we need to do? Mm -hmm. So then that way we can even have half a chance to hear our mom or our daughter's heart. That's exactly right. And you know, mom and I, um, you know, felt like we were communicating well with each other growing up um, as I was growing up and she was um, new in the faith as a believer. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, there would come times where we would, you know, I would isolate from her or she would try and what she calls offer over love of, of uh, really trying to be <laughs> super involved in my life. And so, you know, over us, love. Over I love. like that over love. That's my redefinition of enmeshment <laughs> <laughs> or helicopter Come mom. Here. Helicopter yeah, mom. Yeah, well, over love sounds really good though. You know, you're really <laughs> wanting to be um, involved in their life. And so, um, and it comes across as loving, but yet the other person receives it as you're too close or I need mm -hmm. some space. And so, you know, we had to, you know, mom gave me permission to say when I felt like she was getting too close and, and I felt uncomfortable with that, or she would say, I need you to say that feels like control, or I need you to say that, um, that I'm too involved. And so I had the freedom, which was a, a wonderful offer mm -hmm. from her and something that I wanted to model with my girls. And the, the other thing is that when, when we had something come up with us, some, oftentimes, you know, maybe you have a good relationship and something, an event happens mm -hmm. and you realize that things are not the same. And so, you know, what, what happens often is we want to just go in there and make it right. And, and what we've seen help be helpful is to take a little space and to, to prayerfully consider what your words would be mm -hmm. because words can come out and spill out of you before you know it and then you can't take them back. And so putting a little space between you and then coming back in a healthy way and saying, this is what it felt like when you did this. Um, and here's what I think it will take for our relationship to be better, for, for things to be restored because of this one issue. And so, um, you know, seeking counsel from, from others, from a professional counselor is really, really helpful. But, but knowing when to say what is also helpful. We don't want to always just go in with, here's what I think, but put, put some time and space there. And uh, yeah. no, not put too much because then it seems uncaring. But to be able to go back and healthily say, this is what it felt like. And I know, I know that probably wasn't your intention, but that's how I took it. Yeah, I, and I think part of what you just said sounds so much to me like giving the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And I really think that that's important in family relationships, mm -hmm. well, really anywhere, to just not assume that I know anyone's motives about anything. It might seem that way to me, that, that my mom wasn't listening to me or that she just doesn't care or whatever. I don't truly know that that's her motive or anyone else's. I can say, this is what it feels like or this is what it seems like and give that person an opportunity to say, oh my gosh, no. Because I've had people do that to me and say, no, no, that is not at all what I meant. And I'm like, oh, so there's a chance for growth right there. <laughs> and I think, you know, Mother's Day is just this you know, it's this wonderful holiday, I think filled with the best of intentions. The Bible says to honor our parents, and yet it can be a challenge. I mean, we can be separated um, by distance, um, by disagreements, mm -hmm. by death. And so I think it can be hard sometimes to even approach this holiday. What are your yeah. thoughts? You know, it, it does come with um, a lot of emotions and some women would love to be mothers and haven't yeah. been able to become a mother. So mm -hmm. the focus on Mother's Day is hard for you and, and we, I've, I've gone through that pain mm -hmm. of, of losing a child um, before birth. And I, um, and I also understand that sometimes you just don't know what kind of a gift could even come from you to a mother because 
there's been so much hurt or mm -hmm. maybe your mom seems to have everything but what you really desire mm -hmm. is is to feel like for for that day perhaps you know things are better between you and so really even if you offered her the gift of words you know words that um, mom I see you I recognize the input you've had in my life and I thank you for it so sometimes we might want to keep it simple Mm -hmm. and without um, going too far into to the gush land. Um, <laughs> but it, it is hard, it is hard for, for mothers. But, um, but we know that God sees us and he is, um, he is a restorer of hearts. And so maybe today for Mother's Day, it's really about your heart um, being noticed, being loved on by God, that you would be able to ask him, you know, God, how are you gonna help me move through Mother's Day in a way that feels restorative from where I've been? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God doesn't expect us to live in denial. You know, when he says to honor our parents, he means that, obviously. He also knows that it can be a different amount of challenge for different relationships and for different people. So I think it would be, you know, uh, silly to think that everybody would honor their parents in the same way or celebrate the holiday in the same way. It's, I think it's most important that we are fully present wherever we are and try to do the best we can. What do you think, Dr. Helen? Do you know if your viewers <clears throat> are uh, struggling today mm -hmm. because of a difficult relationship with their mom or perhaps a recent loss, mm -hmm. um, I know God's heart really is in restoration. It's all through scripture, but the, the two passages they may wanna look at today is Isaiah 58, 12 and Isaiah 61, 4. So full of God's heart to restore ruins, mm. the broken places. Yeah. And we, we could sit for hours, I'm sure, and talk about the great benefit that we've had in our life after the brokenness um, period of time <laughs> that when we've gone through a hard time or a broken relationship, doesn't God teach us so much and His grace is so full. So restoration is, when I hear that word, mm. it just makes me so full, yeah. full of hope. And yeah. um, it is God's heart. It is God's heart and it is mm. His desire to do that. We've got to take a break. Stay with us when we come back. We'll continue to talk about Mother's Day and how we can celebrate this day and also leave a legacy. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we are celebrating Mother's Day and talking about how we can best honor our moms and just all of the things that we do uh, to celebrate motherhood. And I'm so glad, Blythe and Dr. Helen, that you all could join me today. Thank you, we're excited to be here. Yeah. You know, as we're talking about, there are all kinds of different situations that women find themselves in on this Mother's Day holiday. Dr. Helen, how about for single moms? Boy, it's a rough day for them. Mm -hmm. It really is. A single mom or a mom that is lost um, children. There's so many complex situations, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. But um, I found a, a real simple definition of grief years ago that has helped um, validate somebody that is hurting, somebody that's in a lot of pain. And that is grief equals losses and changes. Mm. And if they can um, be led or facilitated to name all the losses that they've had and all of the changes, they would look at that list and say, no wonder I feel bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it validates their grief and it is called mm -hmm. the grief. And they of course can be totally restored. God longs 
to come to that broken heart and to restore them. Um, but clarity is always a good thing, and that has always been a, a great clarifier um, whenever we've had um, a, a health challenge or mi many other situations. Sometimes it's called, um, people will say, oh, she's depressed. Well, um, we need to take a second look and see if maybe it's not grief. Right, right, because I think sometimes They're we different. can mislabel things. I didn't know, um, what did you say, grief is losses, losses and, changes. and changes. So I didn't know that definition or that to write everything down, but I did in one year that had just been really stressful. I wrote down all these mm. major stressors and losses that had happened in my mm. life. And when I looked at the list, I felt so grateful to God for seeing me through. And I felt so thankful that after having gone through all of that, that I was still getting up and facing it every day. And I think mm -hmm. that there's something to that. That's of, right. Even if we don't get a Mother's Day card or we're not getting those accolades from our children for whatever reason, to be able to look at our life and to say, you know, as a woman, you know, I did the very best that I could, that I knew mm. how to do, and I pray for my kids or my adult kids, and those things are worth something, don't you think? They really yeah. do. As, I, as you were sharing that, I was thinking about how some moms of children who are no longer living in the home, yeah. they might be living in a different part of the world. Um, maybe that mom doesn't hear, maybe you don't hear today from um, mm -hmm. an adult child and that feels painful, or a spouse doesn't recognize how hard you work as a mom. Mm -hmm. And you know, if we were to look at those external things of we want to hear those things about how they see us as moms and sometimes we don't get those things and and it can leave us in a dark place of feeling well no one notices me no one says these things about me or my my children are strange and i'm probably not going to hear from them today um i think it's so important that we we do go to god um for for those places in our hearts that are longing for the affirmation because we, we're not gonna get that. Even the most wonderful <laughs> mother-daughter situation or mother-son um, you know, or, or, or spouse mm -hmm. is just not gonna always hit that mark every time. Yeah. And so if we are looking you know, for those things to come and they don't come and it breeds disappointment, we can, we can often you know, cut off the disappointment before it comes when we say, God, I know that you've created me to be their mom and, um, and, and I'm gonna take my place in knowing that what I've done, I've done what you've called me to do. And so regardless of whether I hear from them, regardless of, of whether we have a great relationship today, I know that I've done what you've called me to do. Yeah, and I think that that's really important for all of our lives. And I think just to really understand and embrace, people are not meant to fill all of those spaces and voids in our heart. Like no matter mm. how much they love Jesus and how much they love us, there's gonna be that certain amount and it can only be filled by God. Yeah. And to try to make people, events, and things fill all of that for us, I think will always be empty yeah. if we look at it that way. And I think about like moms of sp special needs children or, mm -hmm. you know, like this mom's kids are honor roll kids and they're model citizens. And, you know, there may be moms whose children are incarcerated today. Sure. Those are tough issues, but that doesn't that's mean that she didn't do everything she could. That's right. right. That's right. She's not a failure, and um, you know she's she has been appointed to those children in her life, and and there's not going to be a better mother for your children than you. Mm -hmm. And so, regardless of what things look like, um, you know what one of the things that we are not responsible for other people's actions or choices. And so if a child has gone a different path than what you would have planned on or they're out of communication with you, then that doesn't mean that reflects you really. It's their choices and we can't control. That's what's hard as moms. We can't control. We do get to control right. when they're younger. <laughs> when they're babies, a right? little while, for a little but, while. But then after that, they start making their own choices and it's hard for us to let go. And yet, you know, for moms just to affirm that you are doing the exact right things. And if, and if you feel like you've blown it and you know mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. there is always so much mercy to come back to your children and ask forgiveness. And that's a really yeah. key piece. Yeah. Because where would it, any of us be without the grace and mercy yeah. of God? That's you know, even true. our best efforts aren't enough. I mean, what human being can raise another human being? Yeah. You know? We each have hard. a special story that God has has produced <laughs> if we'll only cooperate. And um, I love something that John Eldridge says. He says, you know, you're in a really difficult 
chapter, but it's not the whole story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is such an encouragement. Yes, it is. But um, expectations are relationship killers. That's what you all just finished talking about. And, yeah. Um, we don't want to ever cause people to be prisoners of our expectations. Mm -hmm. So to to let them go is a gift. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. it is. Let's talk about for a minute, since today is Mother's Day and we're celebrating that, whether it looks the way that we thought or that we wanted to, what are the things that we can do as women, uh, be it a daughter or a mother, or that we're both, to really set in place a different kind of a benchmark, so to speak, or how can we, we can't do anything about what's happened before, but from this moment forward, what are some things that we can set in motion in our hearts for us and for our families for a better tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, Blythe briefly referred to this earlier, but I'll bring it back up. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't get what I needed yes. emotionally from my mom, <laughs> I, I really loved Blythe too, mm -hmm. too fully. Uh, there was that over love. And, but I realized it quickly mm -hmm. and knew I was a flaming codependent. <laughs> so I haven't heard that before, <laughs> flaming codependent. <laughs> so I, I did say, Blythe, th this is not who I want to be. Amen. And if you hear this, 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 or this, please um, tell me, because that's not who I want to be. Mm -hmm. and, and so that habit stopped pretty suddenly. She never called and told me I was <laughs> I was codependent anymore. So mm -hmm. I I think that is something we can do is yes. to ask God for clarity and when we get it, have an action plan and help yourself to be accountable maybe to those that are watching you or involved in you. And it was it really was helpful to all of us. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to be a healthy family. And, yes. Um, God is when we have that desire, God is so faithful to start exposing the things that are not well. Yes, He is. Sadly, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think about how healthy that is that you recognize that in you and that you had enough boldness and confidence to say to Blythe, okay, so when you see or hear me doing this, speak up. So it gives her permission to mm -hmm. say, Mom, um, I'm Overlove. feeling smothered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? So then that way the, the child, even if they're an adult child, doesn't have to feel like, oh, I'm hurting my mom all the time. They've asked me to do this, so we're working together to make this a better relationship. That's did it right. do that for you? It, it did. Yeah. It sure did. It gave me the freedom to be able to speak up. And I think that so many kids, um, both younger kids and older kids, feel talked down to mm -hmm. or spoken to rather than that they have a voice. And so. I think really what we're saying is that when you come to each other in humility and grace, there can be a softening of hearts that would not have been there if you came in a different type of tone. Um, and I think that's a really key key piece of just coming together and celebrating Mother's Day is maybe even asking, what would you want to do today? What, how would you want me to celebrate? Because I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to do something you're not right. comfortable with. Right, because we've used that word mm -hmm. today, expectations, right? And how many times has a holiday or a birthday uh, we've had this list of expectations and we're frustrated because no one meets it, but we haven't articulated it. Nobody's asked us, right. what would you like to do? I think sometimes that's just taking a, a more active role. You know, it would mean a lot to me on Mother's Day, son, if we did X, Y, Z, or here's what I'd like. Are those healthier responses? Totally. That's such a great idea because it really does, it, you're, you're letting your desires and your needs be known and we can't figure each other out. We need to be told, you know, we need to tell others that this is what um, I'm, I'm hoping for. And you know, um, I think even creating something that would bring you together through time. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a project or whether it's simply time together um, around the table that when you create those intentional moments, that's when conversations come up naturally mm -hmm. that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Yeah. yeah. When you say that word projects, like if there are things that I've found in my family that we can work on together where we're creating something or we're baking something or whatever, conversation just happens. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, it really does. And you know, I think that's the thing is that a lot of times it's hard for us to initiate conversation. Yeah. And maybe even holidays bring out that awkwardness of, well, I have two moms, I have you know, two different families, and so I don't know who to spend time with. And, and I think when you can naturally devote time um, and give people your attention, that's really what people crave the most, it mm -hmm. seems. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, I want to wish you both a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank, thank you. you both for coming today on Bridges. It's been so good to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. <laughs> He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yeah. go after that. Today on Bridges, we have been celebrating Mother's Day and looking and finding ways to honor our moms and to really understand that God designed us for relationships. And if there are ways that we can find to honor people, to be able to be honest about what we'd like to see happen or what we need, that then there's a greater chance that we can actually have those needs met. So I pray today for all of you moms that are watching that today has been a really happy Mother's Day. But if it hasn't, if you're in grief over a child that you've lost or you're separated from your children by distance, if it's not everything that you would have wanted in this day today, I pray more than anything that you can feel the comfort and the closeness of God who loves you and who wants to show himself to you and wants to give you hope for everyday living. And so, you know, today as we call it Mother's Day, it might be all that we've dreamed or less than we've hoped. But if God is in it, and if he is at the center of our heart, if we can really learn to lean into him when we're disappointed or even when we are incredibly joyful, God will give us everything that we need for today and for every single tomorrow because he loves us and he's promised himself to us. We're out of time today. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you.